Okay, so here we are in our Airbnb in Helsinki talking about the things we like and dislike about Finland and in fact one of the things we really liked was the Airbnbs. Mm -hmm. So if you guys remember nearly two months ago now we arrived in Helsinki and the first accommodation we had was really fantastic. It was a huge apartment with a really nice design, a uh, super screen TV, even had a PlayStation and I think a piano. Yeah. And since then we've probably stayed in like 10 Airbnbs or maybe even more across a numerous different cities and they've all been really good and had some surprising factors. So for one, there must be a law in Finland that says if you're a host of an accommodation, you are legally obligated to provide coffee as well as coffee filters as well as a coffee machine because every single Airbnb has those three things, which is pretty great for us because a lot of countries we've been to, they don't even have a coffee machine. Never mind the filters and in fact the freshly ground coffee. So it's nice for us every morning. Yes. We know uh, our coffee will be just the way we like it. Also, this key maybe is not impressive to Finnish <laughs> people, but every single Airbnb we've stayed in has this magical key where if you're out in the streets in front of the building, you use this key to enter the lobby. Uh -huh. Once you go up the elevator, you use the same key to open your apartment door. Wow. <laughs> it really is simple technology, but it makes me think like what a futuristic How does it work? Finland. Yeah, exactly. And if the garbage is full and you go downstairs, it's the same key to open the garbage room. Uh -huh. Or if there's a laundry room, you guessed it, same key. Right. So simple thing, but it's like I've never seen it in any country in the world and especially not Canada. True. And yet every single accommodation has this. And also we were sort of uh, surprised the Finnish bathroom has the hose bidet. Ah, yeah. Which to us is a very Asian thing. Maybe that's not right, but we've seen it mostly in Asia. And so we were sort of uh, surprised and pleasantly <laughs> happy that they have the hose bidet here in uh, Finland. Now, yes. another thing we really liked, and in fact, I will upgrade this one to loved, is the sauna. So obviously, I gotta say a huge thank you again to Yane and his family who invited us to his house which was already nice for us to mm -hmm. see a typical Finnish household but in the backyard is where the magic happens because they have the traditional wood burning sauna where we got really hot like 90 some odd degrees and then we went into the cold lake and we did the hot cold <laughs> hot cold three or four times and finished off our experience with some sausages and beer was superlatively good experience yeah and uh one of the comments described the sauna as simultaneously extreme and meditative mm. and i thought this was a good description because when the air is so hot it actually kind of burns your nose on the yes, way in yes and so yane rightfully told us that if you breathe slowly it won't hurt so much ah. so you're in this extreme heat and you're focusing on breathing slowly and sort of slowing your heart rate and the feeling after the hot cold hot cold hot cold is like extreme relaxation yeah it's kind of healing and also good for your body. It's really quite fantastic. And actually every single gym I went to in Finland had a sauna in it. True. So it became part of my routine like twice a week in the sauna. I can honestly say now that we're going to Croatia, I will miss the sauna. <laughs> I'm gonna find somehow to somehow some way to get a sauna in Croatia. Yes. Because it's part of my like weekly routine. It's really great feeling. Yes, it's good for your body. And I even see like pregnant women going into the sauna because I am pregnant and I thought the sauna is bad for you when you're pregnant. But I consulted with my midwife and she said it's totally safe and I trust her. She's a very good midwife. In fact, I like, I really like the healthcare here because I went to a pregnancy clinic and everything was super organized, super efficient. I made an appointment. I was in the room on time no later than one minute <laughs> it was a really good experience as foreigners obviously i'm not a finnish citizen so i have to pay for the healthcare, but it's quite affordable actually the uh -huh. cost isn't so you know uh i mean it's finland i thought it would be like the healthcare if you're not a citizen it was it would be super expensive right but it's quite affordable i did a few lab tests for my pregnancy with the midwife and she even referred me to a doctor here in Finland to give me some prescription med medicine, which I was trying to do that in Sweden and I was not able to unless I go to the emergency room. So as a foreigner, it's a great experience here yeah. with the healthcare. And I assume 
if you are a citizen here, it's even more better. Right. I think, is it free here? Yeah. Yes. Size, yeah. The healthcare is free here to use. And it's very efficient. I really like it. Right. Yeah. So many Finnish people were recommending to us the baby box. They're very proud of this yes. baby box phenomenon. Evidently, it's like a box that has everything you need for the pregnancy. Yes. And the box itself can be used as a crib to sleep the baby in. I'm jealous. I want one of those boxes. Yes. People were saying you got to get the Finnish <laughs> baby box. Now, one thing we didn't like, and I don't want to talk too much about it because maybe complaining about this mm -hmm. is slightly obnoxious, but we didn't really love the weather here. To be fair, we showed up in march which is yes. not the good time of year for the weather ivana and i don't mind the winter if the snow is falling beautifully and it's sort of crisp <laughs> and fresh there are things to do in the snow yes uh, as well as we both love the summer obviously but in the spring months it's sort of not winter and not summer it's similar spring to canada here in finland although i guess this particular spring was longer than usual yes so we're into may now and it's like the high is like seven degrees in May. <laughs> so it's been a long spring. Um, to be fair, True. this is the time of year we came, so it's it's not really fair to complain about it. But we didn't have many experiences outdoors. Yes. Most of the things we did as tourists were indoors yes, because the exactly. weather was just not great. Yes, it's May and it is still cold, but I still see a lot of people eating ice cream outside. Mm -hmm. And my favorite, the best thing, is the salmiaki ice cream so delicious it's the best ice cream there is yes i think so like in the world maybe it cannot be beaten for 32 <laughs> years of my life i thought it was mint chocolate chip best ice cream ah, which to be fair is very good yeah. but salmiaki ice cream it's it's so the greatest dessert it's so unique it's so good it's so we, unique we describe it as salty licorice but it's not it's ammonium chloride but it's so tasty yes yes it's so tasty we've had it so many times i've never tasted like ice cream like that anywhere else in the world it's only here in finland and you can find it definitely the best ice cream you can get it's so, it's so good, good. <laughs> to be fair though to be clear i kind of dislike the salmiaki candy itself which is very funny i like the ice cream but not the candy same like me you too right yeah it's same just like so me. strong there's that flavor in it you know what I mean? Yeah, it doesn't work for me in candy. It's too powerful in the candy. Somehow it's in the ice powerful. cream, it's like smooth and cold. Yes. Uh, and it's funny that Finnish people eat a lot of candy. Yes. And yet they're not overweight. That's true. Very funny. Even on right? Vapu May Day, we saw tons of people walking down the street with a beer in one hand and candy in the other. Like the string candy. Yeah, I've never <laughs> once had beer and candy simultaneously. I feel like I would have a huge belly. I know, I'm jealous. Going to Finland is like walking into a candy store and yep. I'm looking at these people. They're <laughs> eating candy and chocolate bars and they're like in good shape. I'm like so jealous. If I do that, I'll gain like 15 pounds. Immediately, yeah, same. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I think Finnish people overall are sort of athletic people right. and one of the things we really loved is our experience in the hockey arenas watching mm -hmm. uh, the greatest sport ever made, ice hockey. <laughs> so obviously we liked the product on the ice, it was mm -hmm. fun hockey to watch, some really exciting games, especially in the playoffs. Uh, also the fan culture was really, really great. Yes. People cheering and uh, lots of people wearing jerseys and scarves and hats, it really was a fan crowd, not like Toronto where it's mostly business people, but especially in between intermissions. We loved meeting people mm. uh, because we made so many hockey videos, they would recognize us. One guy even gave us a bag of candy. Yes, of course. that's right. <laughs> um, but we met so many sweet people and the reception on YouTube was so good about uh, hockey. We were interviewed at uh, intermission, we mm -hmm. were on the Jumbotron, we were doing radio interviews. So some of our best memories will be in the hockey arenas. <laughs> I'm already potentially planning a return next year for the playoffs. We have to see when True. to come back to Finland. We want to do the Christmas thing. Yes. We want to do the summer and cottage and, <laughs> and uh, the canoeing. Between. And then unfortunately hockey playoffs is in that middle zone. <laughs> yeah. Which is not the time we want to come so by. So should we come during the winter, hockey time or summer season? <laughs> yeah, exactly. At the very least, we are pretty confident we'll be back in Finland one day. Yes, yes. We don't know exactly know when, but potentially hockey and then Yes. Summer or something. And during the hockey finals, actually, we were going back and forth between Tampere and Lahti quite a lot. And what I like is uh, their public transportation here in Finland because we use Absolutely. the train quite a lot. And it's always on time. It's never late. Uh -huh. Clean. 
Yep. We can always find seats if there is no reserved seats. True. And also, there's a, always a bathroom in the train, which is... Also clean. Also clean bathroom. Yeah. Very clean bathroom, actually. The bathroom in Finland, it's always clean. I never found, like, a dirty bathroom. True. But anyway, and it's affordable as well. Yeah. You know? So we were in Sweden, and actually, one time, our train was canceled. Like, one of the first trains we went on. Yes. We didn't film this particular day, but if we did, it was right out of Amazing Race. They told us right. at the last minute, oh, you got to get on a different train across the whole train station. And we were sprinting to the train station. Right. And we just made it within like 10 seconds. We jumped on and started moving. Yes. <laughs> it was like right out of a movie. And another time, our train broke down in Sweden and mm. we had to switch train. All this stuff never happened to us in Finland. We always had a smooth ride here in Finland with the public transport. True. Well, it was 100% reliable. Yes. Yeah. Although, what I don't like is the flight from Finland or to Finland from other countries even in europe yes it's quite expensive fair except maybe to sweden okay <laughs> yeah because <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. normally when you're in europe you can get cheap airlines to fly elsewhere in the same continents you know what i mean we've had some flights in europe that were like 12 euros yes because exactly. you don't bring a big suitcase yeah we went from romania to italy for like i think it was 12 euros yeah and yet in finland it's it's expensive to fly yes exactly so best case for us was to use the ferries we went to estonia we went to sweden we went to uh denmark yes didn't fly once and the ferry was quite good as well ferry was good trains yes. are good but you lose a bit on the flights now yes. one for me one of the things i liked the most and it really stood out was i'm going to use this word uh finnish people are very respectable mm -hmm. so this thing manifests itself in many different ways for one the cleanliness of the bathrooms like ivana said in the public transport also on an experience like may day which is a big uh celebration in the streets yeah everyone's having a beer but nobody was like drinking too much and kind of wasted we yeah. did hear that maybe after midnight you might see that but ivana and i are kind of drinking during the day and <laughs> sleeping early so we saw nobody acting improperly nobody's littering the cities are very clean yes there's not a lot of like vandalism or graffiti yes and also um the cost of doing business on YouTube as a vlogger is there's going to be some comments coming in that's calling you the worst names ever. <laughs> some people will just trash you. Um, to be clear, it was not zero people in Finland who gave us horrible comments, but it was considerably less yes. than other places. We felt like people were pretty kind and warm and sort of receptive to us. It was, it was a nice experience overall meeting Finnish people. Yes. We met a lot in hockey arenas. Um, the people overall seem to be very respectable. Respectable and hospitable as well. Ho yeah, yes. and sort of, sort of nice people. We kind of fit in with Finnish people pretty well. Yes, yes. And so we really enjoyed the people. Right. Now I will have two dislikes kind of wrapped into one. <laughs> um, the beer prices, and we have to learn how to eat rye bread better. So beer is expensive in Finland. Uh -huh. I do like to drink beer, obviously. Uh, in a restaurant, it might be like nine euros or more for one glass of beer. Typically, I would have two beers at dinner. In Finland, I had one beer at dinner. Couldn't uh -huh. afford the second beer. Uh, in the grocery store, you can find some deals on beer. Uh -huh. Like maybe a small can, uh, 0.33 liters for like a euro or a euro 50. Right. But it's not the best prices. Also, Ivana and I have to figure out how to enjoy rye bread. <laughs> we really wanted to do the Finnish thing and eat rye bread. One definition of rye bread could be it's like regular bread but worse <laughs> that's good how you describe it sometimes it feels like you're eating cardboard but maybe yeah. it's because we bought them in supermarkets and uh -huh. not freshly made that might be right Yvonne and i will make burgers at our house quite often we like burgers uh in our airbnb and so we would buy these rye they're almost like hockey pucks they look yeah. a bit like burger buns yeah, yeah, yeah and we couldn't get the to, to work well it was always <laughs> dry and not as good and i was like man we should just buy the brioche bun we really want to do the finished thing um we enjoyed lincolnberry we enjoy reindeer meat we like to eat the local food but rye bread it's a source of pride and for us i think i just prefer white bread with zero nutritional value <laughs> <laughs> talking about bread and expensive beer at least in restaurants the water is free so i like free waters in finnish restaurants that's a good point yes it's always free you can fetch your own drink mm -hmm. usually or you can ask the waiter 
but it's always free. I mean, we went to Denmark and asked for a glass of water. It cost six euros. We got it was a bit of a scam. It, it was, was a buffet. That it was, was a good price. Water. And then we said, "Oh, give us some water," because we thought, "Oh, we're on the yeah. buffet. It's good price." And it was six euros per glass. We spent twelve euros on two glasses of water. I know. It was like, oh, In we should Finland, just not drink the water. It's always free and available to you, which yeah. I like. And the buffet itself, it's quite affordable here. There are lots of buffet restaurants, especially during lunchtime. Uh huh. Maybe it's around twelve euros to fifteen euros for the whole buffet. Yeah, either sushi buffet or Mexican buffet or uh-huh. Finnish food buffet. Uh huh. I like the buffet here. Yeah. And with free, the free water. And free water is a good point. <laughs> Quite often it'll be almost like a draft beer situation, but just for water. Yeah. And you just go up and kind of put your cup and get your own free water. Yes. Yvonne and I are fans of tap water also. So the yeah. tap water is good and the water in the restaurants <laughs> is free. Now we'll end off on the last dislike, uh-huh. which I'm going to wrap into a like. Okay. Uh, to be fair, there's not that much to do in a Finnish city. Which yeah. sounds kind of like a harsh criticism. Keep in mind, we came in March yeah. and April, and now it's May. Um, I guess Helsinki has no old town or no castle or no old city wall. This is a good tourist experience for people. Right, right. I think there's lots to do, certainly at Christmas time, mm-hmm. Lapland, yeah. as well as in summertime at the cottages. So uh, most of the things we did were in hockey arenas or indoors somewhere. True. The cities don't have that necessarily much to do for tourists. For a tourist, like I would have a hard time spending a month in Helsinki because yes. I think you'd run out of things to do. True. Whereas true. other cities we've been, there's a lot going on. Like Istanbul, for example. There's so much going on over there. Yeah. Now it could just be a population factor because the population of Finland mm. is lower, so maybe just not bigger of a city. But uh, I think the best way to experience it for a tourist would be to get a car. I love road trips to begin yeah. with. But to go driving around, I think you might have more things to do, more things to see, beautiful nature and lots of small I towns. Think so. Because the big cities are pretty quiet. Mm-hmm. Like exceedingly quiet. Yes, exactly. At least in our experience, keep in mind we were here in March, <laughs> which is our own choice. So anyway, that's what we love and hate, I should say like and dislike, about Finland. We are planning to come back. We're not sure when. Will it be a Christmas trip? Will it be a summertime cottage trip? I've seen online there's like lakes. Where there's this tiny island, and somebody has built a sauna on the island. Yeah. And so you can just canoe up and then just use the sauna. Oh, you know where It would be a pretty go? good experience. The sauna festival. I, I also saw it on great. TV. There's a yeah. sauna festival on wheels. It's so yeah. cool. I want to go there. <laughs> our, our next project is to go back to Canada. Yvonne is going to give birth. We're going to buy an old school bus and turn it into an RV. Huge project. Yvonne's thinking, can you put a sauna in the RV? I'm like, it's not a bad idea, but I don't know if I have the space in a mini school bus, you know? <laughs> but yeah, the sauna on wheels would be a good idea. You have Finnish eyes us. How do you say? Yeah. Finnish yeah. eyes? F- Finnish eyes. <laughs> sure, we've become Finnish eyes. We love sauna. <laughs> Although we're still learning the ways of rye bread. Okay, thanks for watching, everybody.